Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to the third episode of Petrolama. This week, my guest is Katarina Davies. She is my neighbor that I grew up next to, and she became one of my closest friends. So she knows too much about me. Um, so I'm a little bit nervous about this one, but it should be fun. Hi, Katarina. Hello. Well, thank you so much for having me, Stephanie. It's a real oh, pleasure. Lord have mercy. Bless your heart for making the time. Well, thank you. It's been a dream of mine to be on your show. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, guys. We will not be speaking in those voices. <laughs> the majority of the podcast. We'll pull it out occasionally. Only when it matters. So like all the time. <laughs> So constantly. Mm -hmm. um, Katarina, so good to see you. Thanks for having me. I just want you to know that uh, the show is called Petrol Llama and the rest. Oh, your sound stopped, but I did see a rug. Oh, that's a shame. What'd I you was say? Petrol Llama rug. Oh, so sometimes I think you're covering up the mic when you're talking, maybe with your hands. Is this better? Yeah, just hold your hands out straight for the entire hour. Okay. So behind <laughs> me is a llama rug. <laughs> Did you get that llama rug? <laughs> yeah, we got it. We hear you loud and clear yeah. now. There you go. Oh my god. Um, okay, so you went car shopping today. Oh my god. I didn't just go car shopping. I went car shopping in College Station, Texas. <laughs> and what would you say is the biggest difference in car shopping? Uh, <laughs> just like the, my dad did come with me um, out of moral support. And he was, he had his like yellow notepad and he was taking notes. <laughs> he was <laughs> making notes? Yes. And he would like ask these like super technical questions. He's like, okay, so now the six cylinder and the eight cylinder now, like what, how much power are you getting with that? Like blah, blah, blah. And uh, the guy at the first dealership, he couldn't even like answer any of the questions. <laughs> and he was like, my dad's like walking around the car, like writing stuff down. And he just looks at, he looks at me and he just goes, your dad's really thorough, huh? <laughs> I was like, yeah. Um, my mom would agree. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Bridget. You're already here. That's great. Hey, um, I recently just got a new car as well. Don't worry about it. It's a convertible because I live in LA now. So oh. let's go. Um, wow. But I do remember feeling really stupid during car during the car buying process. So we're like looking at different models and stuff. And he was like, so do you want like two or four wheel drive? And I was like, I want the car to work. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get six? <laughs> like, I'm going to need all four tires to drive my car. Yeah. And he was like, okay, so you said you wanted black? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, we're talking yeah. features I care about. <laughs> A steering wheel would be great. <laughs> Not a deal breaker, but uh, <laughs> anyways, I'm an excellent negotiator. Um, okay, so what was your car driving experience like? Were there certain features you were looking for? Um, I basically was kind of like an old lady. I was just like, I want really good gas mileage and I want it to be safe. <laughs> and they were like, do you want to get a minivan, ma'am? <laughs> Is it just uh, me or you always feel like they're trying to like pull one over on you at the car dealership? Yeah, I was kind of expecting that, but I feel like my, um, uh, my, um, uh, bodyguard <laughs> with the notepad was like, it was helpful in avoiding that. Um, but you could tell they probably thought that my dad was going to buy the car for me. So it was like, oh, so yeah. were they talking to him instead of you? And you're like, uh, wallets oh. over here, brother. <laughs> yeah. At one point I was like, uh, my dad asked a question and the car dealer goes like, yeah, I think she'll really like this. And I was like, well, hi. <laughs> when I used to work for a car company, I won't name which one. Um, 
But when I used to work for one, I had to secret shop for them first. And so I went to different places and pretended to be a married woman. <laughs> Huge <laughs> departure. And um, I like shopped uh, places all over the nation. And then I came to Texas and I did a fake shop. And at the end of it, when I was supposed to be like, okay, like let's sign this puppy and get it over with. The guy was like, so when is your husband available um to come make the actual purchase oh my god <laughs> uh, uh, what year is it listen motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was not a good experience yeah um so basically i might just like have a bike just out of like <laughs> whole, like sheer feminism <laughs> I'm a real girl. Look at my two wheels. <laughs> so if you catch me going 70 on I-35 in my electric bike. <laughs> oh, I was like on a bike? <laughs> yeah, fucking right, dude. Um, I don't know. You could get a high-speed one, I'm sure. Not 70 miles <laughs> per hour, Katarina. I would get a helmet. Okay, chill. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Um, cool. What a cruiser. Uh, (laughs) okay. So you are living in your parents' house right now. I am. How long have you been there? Um, I've been here a few months. I drove down from DC, um, the first week of November and we've just kind of been hanging out, um, braiding each other's hair. (laughs) You and Fred. (laughs) Yeah, especially me and Fred. That's funny because Fred's bald, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, no, it's been a really fun time. Oh my God, I love that. Um, Say hello to my mother and father since they're just right across the driveway from you. They are. That's been like the worst part of COVID is not being able to see them. Oh, I thought you were going to say that they were so close. I was like, (laughs) girl. (laughs) <laughs> it's been the worst part of COVID is your parents are right there <laughs> yeah just constant fear <laughs> oh yeah. my god I feel like I I know the whole neighborhood's like full schedule because my dad set up my little makeshift office in one of the corner rooms that has two windows onto the street so I know everything everybody's doing oh I know my. who's sleeping with who who's not really going to bible study when they say they are <laughs> Speaking of Bible study, um, amen. <laughs> amen. What I know the answer to this, which is why I'm asking. But what uh, what was the first time we actually hung out? Um, so let me take everybody back to 2005. <laughs> Sweet little 14 year old cat <laughs> and her friend Michael. Yeah. Um, we were approached by said <laughs> Stephanie, <laughs> who was trying to recruit us to the cult of young life. <laughs> she was a leader. <laughs> Listen, if you're going to do it, do it. Okay. Yeah. Well, you got us to go though. So you were a very good evangelist. Listen. Um, yeah. So Stephanie offered to give us a ride. And so we obliged, we get in the car. Stephanie pulls out a like stack of CDs and as she's driving with her hands over the steering wheel is going through the CDs <laughs> while violently shaking the car from left to right down the street and asking me what kind of music I like. <laughs> so I remember thinking, Jesus, take this wheel, please. <laughs> and sure enough, we made it to Young Life. So it all worked out. <laughs> Jesus took the wheel indeed. And I took the stereo. So. <laughs> Yeah. Still a terrible driver. Um, I'm shocked that I have not have any had any incidents in LA so far. Well, well there's time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm basically calling it in, I guess. Um, <laughs> so what color is your car? It's black. And then Ooh. the interior is black. And then the rims are black. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> that sounds she likes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I have Lord have mercy. Um, what was I like in high school? 
Um, I remember that you were like, I remember thinking that you were really cool. <laughs> um, okay, let's calm down because then I got to know you. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember I thought you were really cool that you were super outgoing. You, I always remember like I'd see you in the hallway and you would be like hugging and like talking to everybody. And I was like, that's my neighbor. <laughs> She's a hugger. She's a hugger and a lover. <laughs> um, yeah, but I just, yeah, I just remember thinking that you were so nice and just really cool. Oh my God. Uh, that's yeah. so, it's so nice to hear because I, I remember when I, so I was a senior when you were a freshman and I remember when I was a freshman and if any senior talked to me, I was like, <laughs> Did everyone see that? <laughs> So I'm glad I was nice because I don't think that perhaps everyone would use that description of me. You don't think so? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm sure there's people I was a little shithead to. I mean, high school, I think all of us probably were rude to somebody at some point. Yeah, that's fair. And I mean, they're like on another podcast talking about how <laughs> the terrible thing we did to them. <laughs> truly, truly. Ugh, they have to be. Oh God. Um, man, I don't even know what to bring up next. I, I have a good question for you, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, so you are Peruvian. Yes. Yes. And um, what was it like growing up as a person of color in College Station? I mean, I guess my thing is that, you know, there's different um you know, there's different races within the Latin American community. And so I think for our family, I mean, we we're like pretty white. So I can't say that you know, I ever felt like discriminated against, you know, because we were people of color. Like I, I think others have had it much worse than we have. Um, but I think more just like ignorance about where my mom's from um, than anything. So... <laughs> Um, what were people's guesses? I just, um, I think a lot of people just thinking that like all Latin American countries are the same. So like mm. just people using the term like Mexican to describe everything, uh, like that was super infuriating. And I remember it actually like made me resentful of like people who were, who were like Mexican American around me. Like I was like, we are different than them. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, which is awful because I feel like sometimes racism does that where it makes you, um, it makes you want to like be different from the group. Um, and so, yeah, now it, as an adult, I'm like, like, fuck these people. <laughs> like, we're all cooler than you. That's incredible. What would you say is one of the defining qualities of being Peruvian? Um, I, I mean, I think my mom is just like, she like encapsulate, encapsulates it. Like, is that a word? Encapsulates it? Encapsulates it. it. <laughs> Anyways, we're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 sorry. She, <laughs> let's just try that one more time. <laughs> she, I want to say incorporates, and that's not right either. Mm -mm. Um, that I feel like she captures, captures. Oh, cute. It, yeah, perfectly. Uh, just like very witty, um, very loyal. Um, like she, Maritza, like nobody will like have your back harder than Maritza. Mm -hmm. um, and no one will talk shit to your face like Maritza. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the best of both worlds. Like she'll always tell you what she's thinking. Okay. She um, case in point. Um, it's the day after my wedding and we're all over at my parents' house swimming in the swimming pool and your mom comes and gets me and she's like, I need to talk to you. And I was like, okay. So I went inside and sat next to her and she goes, I see an engagement ring. And I was like, uh-huh. And she was like, where is the wedding band? And I was like, well, you know, we're getting a new place in Colorado. And so that's where our money's going to. And she just shook her head and she was like, you deserve better. Marisa <laughs> knew, she knew. <laughs> she knew I was getting divorced. She didn't even need 24 hours after that wedding. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, um, 
I feel like the biggest red flag for us personally was at your reception. Oh, good. Let's let's hear. <laughs> so my dad, my mom, and I are like standing behind two family members of Chris. Uh, I assume, or they could just be terrible relatives of yours. But I'm pretty sure they were. <laughs> they were Chris's family. Um, <laughs> So they were seated and we were standing behind them because there was like a huge screen and they're showing, you know, pictures of you like from being little to growing up. And it's like this most like heartfelt video. Your parents are bawling, like everyone's crying. And then I hear the person in front of me go like so loud to the person next to her in like the most disgusted voice go, oh, she really looks Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> And I just remember my dad, it was just so offensive that my dad just kind of laughed because he, it was like, the was the weirdest reaction. And then I remember just like looking at my mom, my mom looked like she could have like frozen water with her stare. She was like, what the, f <laughs> like, that um, happened at my wedding. That yeah. And <laughs> I was just like, well, this is good. <laughs> okay. And then it was your baby picture. Like I was like, who, who said that? Not that it would be okay to say that if you were older, but I was like, who looks at a baby picture and goes like, oh, what's cute. No, it's like, no oh, you can't say a racist yeah. comment if they're under six months old. Everyone knows that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, adorable. Okay. Yeah. Um, did you or did you not make bets at the wedding on how long the marriage would last? Um. <laughs> Um, yeah, we actually had a pool, um, and it looks like your dad won. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I've ever told you this, but, um, so right before my wedding, I was in the car with my dad and my mom and we kind of had to pull around the back. So it would be like a surprise entrance, like, no way she's in a dress and wearing white. This is nuts. Um, and there was this, V and we could go left, which meant that we were going to be leaving the, the venue and everything or right, which meant we were going to the wedding and my dad stops and he says, do you want to go left or do you want to go right? And I remember in my head was just screaming left, 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 get me the fuck out of here. And I like paused for a very long time. Oh my God. That just gave me goosebumps. Yeah, it's wild. It's super wild, especially like thinking like that is a moment I will never forget because it's a moment where I didn't make the tough choice to choose myself. Yeah. Um, I chose what I thought everyone wanted and what was the right thing to do and all of those kinds of things versus listening to my gut, no matter what that meant and going with that instead and like that has stuck with me big time but also um i think it's also like a great learning moment where it's like mm -hmm. you picked the path that you thought everyone else wanted and it you know didn't go well but no. also kind of a um just like the intuition of your dad to say that to you yeah i think he knew i think, I think that's really sweet that's like your dad yeah. My dad is really, really great in those kinds of moments. So yeah, Chris and I got divorced same day of turning in my divorce paperwork. I like went on my lunch break, came back, got let go from my job. Oh. And I, I just lost it. Like I absolutely lost my shit. It was like every part of my identity was ripped away from me. I had so much pride in my job and the, all my friends worked with me and I was also getting rid of this, you know, my best friend, you know, this someone I had spent seven and a half years of my life with who we grew up together. We did all of those things together and it just was, it was earth shattering for me. And I remember that I got a job offer, um, you know, once I started interviewing and doing all of those things, one in Boulder where I was, um, one in California and one in Austin. Yeah. I remember I picked you up from the Austin job. Yeah. 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 I got put on mascara for the interview. That's the yeah. <laughs> I was so pissed. I was, I was like, like, she's not going to get the job. Yeah. 
I don't have my if I don't have my face on, how's anyone gonna hire me? Um, they still offered me the job. But uh, so you drove me home, and my dad and I were sitting out on the porch. We were drinking something, and I just was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And he was like, well, which option scares you the most? And I was like, California, San Francisco scares me the most 100%. And he was like, do that. Do yeah. that. Choose that one then. Because Stephanie, you planned your entire life out and, and you're so intent on following this plan and doing these things in a certain order. And that blew up for you. And that's okay, but that's opening the door to do something completely different and you yeah. should go for it. And that was one of the best moves I've ever made in my life. Yeah. I mean, that's just like serious, like girl dad energy where yeah. like, I'm sure he would have loved to have you close by, but it's like, he knew that you needed to spread your wings. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. My dad's really, really good at that. He's always like, Oh, yeah. go for it. That's going to be cool. I'm like, yeah. Right. Yeah. I definitely, your dad to me is just like highly, highly emotionally intelligent. Like he's so good at reading people. Yeah. He's very, very good at reading people. He's very good at making people feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, but also his way of making people feel comfortable is to just make fun of them until they cry. <laughs> Don't know if anyone else's dad is like that. <laughs> Fred is not. Fred is the kindest soul who ever walked the planet. Yeah, I don't know what, like which Fred you've been hanging out with, but. <laughs> <laughs> How do you see your dad? I mean, I think my dad is just like, I he's just like a total like ball buster. Like he, <laughs> no sarcasm. Can I not say ball buster on the? Oh on the no, ball, it, balls is the one term oh. that's not allowed. <laughs> I am so sorry. I take it back. Can we scratch it from the record? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he's just like super sarcastic. Um, I mean, he just. My dad got married when he was like thirty four. So it was like, I mean, back then that was like ancient. Yeah. Um, um, and so it was yourself. Kind of like, I'm turning 34 this year, bitch. <laughs> but you know, like in the eighties, that was like 34 is like you're 70. Inch. Okay. Um, so yeah, so he's just like, he's always just been like no bullshit with my sister and I, and I think it's because he got, you know, so does wild oats as we may say. <laughs> I do not want to hear about Fred sowing any oats. <laughs> well, he did. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but yeah, I think my dad's like very funny and um, I do, I, one of my like favorite memories is there was, we were at your parents' house and your dad was showing us this like viral video of that badger. It's like, honey badger don't care or whatever. Hey, okay, honestly, Every time I go home, it is like, have you seen this YouTube video? <laughs> I wait, this is a good one. This is a good one. This is funny. Oh, listen, listen. He's about to say something funny. And it's like 45 of the videos that we watched two years ago. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just my parents. <laughs> no, but I, I also saw a meme the other day where it was like, with all the Bernie uh, memes, with yes. him wearing the mittens at, at the inauguration that um, somebody had tweeted like, great, I can't wait to get a uh, text from my mom in a few weeks asking me if I've seen these Bernie memes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, um, my brother calls them memes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my mom calls them. She calls them, I think she calls them memes. Yeah. Memes. <laughs> yeah, my brother's like, hey, do you see that meme? No, <laughs> like, nope, mm -mm. No, sir. No, uh, mm -mm. Okay, so keep telling your story. Oh, okay. So the, I feel like this is like the perfect dynamic dynamic of like your dad with my dad. So your dad's <laughs> showing the video because it's hilarious. It is, it was like, well, back then it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> In 2005, it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we're all laughing at the honey badger don't care thing. And then my dad just goes, that is just incredible. How unbelievable that it doesn't get poisoned from the snake. <laughs> And he like wouldn't drop that. And it was like, that was not the point of the video, but he couldn't help himself. <laughs> oh, Fred. Yeah. Love, yeah. God bless him. God bless Fred. 
Yeah. And his obsession with um, your family, Cat Floyd, RIP. Oh, wait, Floyd died? Oh. <laughs> Floyd is dead? <laughs> I think so. When did Floyd die? Oh my God. My mom never tells me <laughs> anything. Like, I'm pretty sure it's been like a few years. <laughs> I cannot um, believe the cat is dead. No one told me. Well, your reaction is like what Fred found out from your mom. <laughs> because we don't have any pets at our house because my mom's a clean freak. Um, but uh, your white cat, Floyd, that's how Fred would always describe it. He, every time he'd see your mom, he'd be like, oh, Floyd was on our roof or he was on our yard. And, um, and he'd be like, that cat just has the whitest dang coat. He's like, I just don't know how he does it. And it's like, every time we see your mom, you would say that. And your mom was like, yes, I know he has a white coat. <laughs> but anyways, Fred loved Floyd from afar. Okay, well, R.A.P. Floyd, I guess. I mean, I tried to save him once. <laughs> Truly. Okay, wait. Does your, like, my mom has done this multiple times. My godmother died. And she did not tell me because I That's was in a rough place. And I was like, <laughs> um, so apparently like I asked about her. I'm like, how's Rita? We haven't seen Rita in so long. And my mom was like, if she did, <laughs> we're not going to see her again. <laughs> <laughs> and then she proceeds to blame me. She's like, well, look how long it took you to ask about her. <laughs> I was like, what? I am a child. <laughs> oh my God. Um, we love you, Loretta. Yeah, I was going to say, you just made Loretta sound like she's awful and she's oh quite the God. opposite of that. <laughs> no, I've got <laughs> the greatest mom on the planet. Yeah, my yeah. mom's amazing. Every time I've been in like an absolute breakdown, she's the person I call. Yeah. And it starts off a little bit like this. <laughs> and Wait, why does like, oh he, like and she'll translate those noises too which is great oh. <laughs> <laughs> no my mom's awesome she uh she's so supportive of my comedy too especially that you know half the content is making fun of her so that is love yeah no your mama sure does love you let me tell you. She does, but there was a point in time where I was real jealous of you and my mother's relationship. Well, you know how it goes. You can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's so, like in hindsight, I can like see how, yeah, I was spending a lot of time with your mom, but I just feel like like a mother daughter bond is like nothing that you could compare to, um, to like a relationship, like outside of that. Yeah. And I think, I think sometimes if you're, I feel like it's easy for your mom and I to get along well, because we're not mother daughter. Like, I mean, yeah. I also like argue with my mom and I don't know what mother daughter duo doesn't have. Um, well, did she tell you it. about, did she tell you about Rita? <laughs> I, knew, I was at the funeral. She invited me. <laughs> I actually spoke at Rita's funeral. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. No, but I definitely, you know, I always call your mom my foster mama. <laughs> yes. And she loves to call you her foster family. Yeah. Um, um, our families are super close. Uh, when there's not a global pandemic, we... <laughs> spend Christmas Eve together. We do. Would you like to tell the people oh about God. our little tradition, where it comes from? I would just love to do that. Is everybody sitting down? Hold um, on a second. I think I might have to switch this actually. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Um, so basically what we do is we mold our Peruvian uh, Christmas with our American Christmas because my mom is from Peru and Fred's from America. And so what we do is um, Christmas Eve, we do the Peruvian version, which is 
at midnight we have hot cocoa and this like fruit bread called panettone. It's it's like an Italian sweet bread. And so we have that at midnight. No, wait, wait. Why is it an Italian sweet bread, but um, a Peruvian tradition? Um, I think it's from the Italian immigrants in Latin America. And I'm pretty sure I, I'm pretty sure there's other Latin American countries that do panettone at midnight as well. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we do that at midnight. And then our family has a tradition of we read or listen to um, the Polar Express, uh, read by William Hurt from 1982, I think. It's so. the specific version. <laughs> yeah, so it's on a cassette tape because <laughs> her, an aunt of ours like gave it to us for Christmas when my sister was like two. So anyway, so we, um, I have to pull out my old cassette player. <laughs> The true miracle of Christmas is that that boom box still works. <laughs> She's good. And she has, what was it? <laughs> it was like Bass, oh, Bass Pro or something. Yeah, I think Bass Pro would be a huge fishing store in Texas, Katarina. <laughs> Sorry, I just, when I come home, I just become it again. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> what's, it what's that speaker got? Bass. <laughs> Y'all got the bass pro on your speaker? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so somebody gets uh, the privilege, might I say, mm -hmm. of getting to turn the page every year. And another person gets the privilege of ringing the bell. Um, if you're confused, you need to read um, the yeah. Polar Express. Okay. You really do. Yeah, maybe we'll do a part two, just about the Polar Express. <laughs> we'll do a live <laughs> reading on Christmas. <laughs> Um, yeah. And so I can't remember when y'all started coming over for that. Um, but your family when just you started glomming on to your family tradition. <laughs> Me neither. It's so nice though. Yeah. Um, it's seriously one of my favorite parts of the Christmas tradition. Yeah. But we haven't gotten to do it in a long time. I know. It's sad. It's so um, sad, but it's it cool because like one of my favorite things is finding out how people celebrate Christmas all around the world. So obviously I lived in Spain, humble brag. Oh my God, were you, were you in Barcelona? <laughs> I was in Barcelona, okay. <laughs> um, and you know, Spain has a lot of poop humor. And so their traditions revolved around the same humor. Um, the first thing is they believed that I guess the Holy Family caught someone taking a shit while Jesus was being born. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> so in every nativity scene, they have a little figurine taking a shit and they have entire markets where it's like they make every famous person the person taking a shit and you can buy whichever one you want. And then they also have this thing called cagatio and um, that means uncle shit. And under everyone's Christmas tree is a uh, log of wood with a blanket over its butt. And on Christmas morning, the kids beat the log with a stick <laughs> while singing, cagatio, cagatio. I don't know the rest of the song clearly. <laughs> Until the log shits out presents underneath the blanket. <laughs> the first shit of Christmas. <laughs> Oh God, can you imagine if you got like a dog for Christmas that year? Oh, that, and that's why Spot has a limp. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Um, one of my favorite memories with you is Renee and Joe's wedding. So my brother and sister-in-law. <laughs> And first of all, Renee is the best sister-in-law to ever walk the planet. She is so sweet. She is so funny. She's so smart. Um, and she had a really beautiful wedding in which Katerina and I both were bridesmaids. <laughs> and if you've ever seen the movie Bridesmaids, uh, <laughs> <laughs> our, kind of of that. <laughs> yeah, our experience was a lot like that, except for no one shit in the street. So, um, we can remember. <laughs> yeah, truly. 
Um, we, we kept it pretty classy during the ceremony, Mm -hmm. um, at the rehearsal dinner also kept it pretty classy. Um, and then we decided afterwards that we were going to continue the party at Northgate, which is where (laughs) all the students from Aggieland party. Um, do you want to take it from here, Katarina, about what you remember? (laughs) Cause that's where my memory goes out. How, how old were we? I think I was like 23, maybe. Yeah, it means I was 27. Yeah. Well, so we had a fun old time at Northgate. <laughs> a fun old time. Fun old time. We were with one other bridesmaid. Shout out to Caitlin. She vomited yeah. in front of a bar. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Which made us all go home because <laughs> we were like, we probably had enough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were all wearing our bridesmaids dresses and the, our cowgirl boots. So yes, we wore magenta. It was perfect for Northgate. Um, <laughs> and only Northgate. <laughs> <laughs> Northgate. Um, I do remember we like ran into a high school friend of mine and he was like, Katarina. And then I was like, oh, hey, I'm just like with some friends. And then he, I remember him looking over at us and like, we're all wearing matching outfits. <laughs> And he like didn't say anything and he was like, it's good to see you. And then he's just <laughs> sorry, we're rushing in a sorority. Don't worry about yeah, this. Have to go. Um, but yeah, so I remember getting home and I uh we of course it was a wedding, so we had had a good time. And <laughs> I remember waking up the next morning and I thought, dear God, I had the weirdest dream that I cut myself out of my dress last night. <laughs> to which I I pick my head up and I see purple, um, it looked like, like purple machete had just like exploded in my room. And I was like, oh my God. And then it just all came back to me. I had gotten home had figured out I couldn't unzip my dress by myself. And I thought, God knows I'm not going to wake up my mom (laughs) to get me out of the dress. And so I go to the kitchen, get scissors, and I proceed to cut down the dress. (laughs) And it was super thick fabric and I was just using kitchen scissors. So I couldn't get through it. And I was just cutting like pieces off, but nothing was getting me out of the dress. And so I'm walking through the house, pitch black, walking around trying to cut out of the dress. And I finally make it back to my room and I just twist the dress to the front and unzip it. So I like cut it for no reason. Um, but I remember, I remember your mom's, uh, one of her best friends from high school, Uncle, stayed Kevin. With us, Uncle Kev. And I remember like walking out in the living room and he just like had like a piece of, of like fabric in his hand. He's like, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh boy. <laughs> uh, I just remember that he came over to our house and he was like, I thought there had been a murder. <laughs> what I love is that my mom went like full Marita and obviously she was saying this to me in Spanish, um, but I'm just going to use her accent for, um, for effect. But she was like, how could you cut yourself out of your dress? She's like, you could have, you, she's like, why didn't you wake me up? You could have cut yourself. You could have cut your tetas. <laughs> your tetas I feel like she was mad at you because she was like you gotta warn that again I, know. I was like mom we both know I was not gonna wear that dress again they were pretty bridesmaids dresses but it's just like that's not a fabric that you're gonna wear like no it's- well what am I saying we did go out in them we did use them <laughs> I already did mom I'm not gonna wear yeah. it a third time that was a two-wear dress mom <laughs> yeah they were cute um I will post pictures before the cutting. <laughs> we should have, you should have made me put it back on after with the cutting. <laughs> that would have been, it's like the family photo. My sister married with her first baby. And then it's like me with my cut up dress before and after. <laughs> and this is our sweet baby girl cat. <laughs> and the Christmas card that year. <laughs> You just knew that cutouts in a dress were cool before anyone else did. Yeah. And the next thing I know, everyone's doing it. <laughs> okay. So meanwhile, I am having the crisis of my lifetime right next door. <laughs> so I wake up from said night out 
And I realized that there is someone else in my bed with me (laughs) and I'm at my parents' house and ha, did I bring a one night stand home to my parents' house? (laughs) Um, what the fuck? How am I going to get them out of here before my father murders them? (laughs) Um, then I realize it's Caitlin, the other bridesmaid. <laughs> um, that was a close one. Uh, but yeah, I really thought I was going to die. Um, a very slow death from my parents. Yeah. We both I remember have- your mom saying that she like walked into the room and she just saw, um, also Caitlin was like five feet tall, like, yeah. Soaking wet was probably 75 pounds. <laughs> yeah. She's <laughs> tiny. And your mom said that she just like saw her just like pop up. <laughs> and then your mom was like, oh. <laughs> and then she, she closed the door. <laughs> she was like, oh, it's an odd way to find out your daughter's a lesbian. <laughs> like, I did not see that one coming. Uh, I think she saw it coming. <laughs> I feel like my dad pulled me aside one time and he was just like, you know, no matter who you bring home, we would be okay with it. How old were you? This is like after wedding one. <laughs> so the first marriage didn't work out. So she's got to be a lesbian. <laughs> Total les. Um, yeah. Oh, love that man. He's, he's a good pops. God bless um, okay. We are nearing time, but so I'm going to ask you just a few more questions. Okay. Um, what was my, how would you describe my brother? Do you remember anything about him? Um, I think, uh, the best way I would describe your brother, or I like, I have to tell a story about him. I remember, um, you saying that when you had like started driving, that Joe had told you. Hold on, just a second. Oh, Bridget, it gets better. <laughs> Bridget's <laughs> interrupting. Hey, Bridget. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, that was my mom voice. <laughs> what? I got scared. I even got scared. Um. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We'll edit that out. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> The title of your, the title of this needs to be no, no. <laughs> no. 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 Um, so I remembered that Joe had told you that stop signs <laughs> that have white around them, you don't have to stop at. So for anyone who hasn't noticed, all stop signs have a white border. <laughs> so <laughs> this, <70. laughs> uh... <laughs> This was almost a really cute death. Um, so I was learning how to drive. My mom's in the front seat and I see the stop sign. And I'm like, oh, tight. It has white around it. So I just go right on through it. And we almost get T-boned by another car. <laughs> how funny would that have been? Oh, oh yeah, man. that was me. <laughs> <laughs> he also told me that um, if you turn the radio off, it saves gas. Yeah. And he told me this because he didn't want to listen to my music anymore. Um, And it was my turn to play music. And he was like, oh, wish we could, but I'm actually low on gas. I don't have enough gas to play the music. And I was like, oh, okay. (laughs) Very cool. Also, I don't know if there's time, but the story of your brother um, when he was at Texas Tech and you went to go visit him. Oh my God. Okay. Tony, you have to tell the story. It's just, <laughs> this is like one of my favorites. <laughs> okay. So sad story. Um, I wasn't asked to prom. So I went to go see my brother in Lubbock instead. Cause I didn't want to be around the festivities. Yeah, of course. Not. And, <laughs> and, uh, um, so I'm there, we're on campus. We're on one of the campus buses and this girl gets on who's really pretty and she sits down next to us and joe starts talking her up you know and it's obvious she's deaf and she's asking for directions and joe's giving her directions or whatever and then she gets off on the next stop and joe elbows me and he was like was that girl hot or what do you hear the accent on her 
face fucked the shit out of her. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if that was an accent as much as a speech impediment because she had a hearing problem. <laughs> and he was like, you sure? I was like, 100%. <laughs> um, yeah my brother's crazy okay uh what i interrupted I, was gonna say, I hope he asked her out yeah i hope he still did too or he's an asshole um so you know tbd i'll follow up with you <laughs> let us know follow up pod. yeah what's wrong with going out with someone who's deaf um i went on a couple of dates with a guy who was deaf in san francisco How'd that go? I mean, he knew what to do with his hands. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he didn't laugh at all my jokes, which I didn't love. Um, I bet he just couldn't hear you well. Yeah, I'm pretty loud. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, okay. So when is the last time you shit your pants? Um. <laughs> an interesting question yeah we're gonna take a sharp left <laughs> um I don't really have like a good shit your pants story because I was listening to your other pods and I was like oh these are really funny so um can I tell a story of when my brother-in-law should absolutely not TJ that Max? Is, no that is not the question you don't out other people on this podcast you only out yourself I when just, like, is the last time you shit your pants, Katarina? How old were you? Um, I, I was 20. Okay. Where were you? Um, I was in Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go um, ahead. Uh, my family, my parents had been there for six months and we went down for the holidays. My sister and I did with my brother-in-law, who you won't let me tell his TJ Maxx story, which is hilarious. Um, but maybe you can have him on as a guest so he can tell the story. Um, but anyways, um, uh, we were out snorkeling and we've been out on a boat and I think I just got like, like a terrible stomach ache, terrible. The grumblies? Like really bad. And I was like, we were like in the middle of the Indian ocean. Like I, what do I do? (laughs) And then I was like, I'm going to have to like go in the water. And I was like, so humiliated. And I was like, oh my God, what do I do? And so- What if it floats? Does she float? Oh my God, science, help us. I had a tummy ache. So that was a (laughs) non-issue. So wait, did you like knowingly go into the water to shit? I had to go in. (laughs) And I, what was awful was that the guide who was with us was so nice. And so he thought, he like wanted to make sure I was like, I, he didn't know that I was having a stomach issue, but he like wanted to make sure I wasn't like by myself in the water. And so I was like, he kept trying to small talk. And I'm literally like, I'm there like, dude, I'm about to have a low. Like, you need to leave. And so- Did you tell him that? No, no, oh. no. We could barely like, we were just talking in like broken English to each other. I just like wasn't really responding to him. And then I think he finally caught on like, oh, she wants to be alone. <laughs> oh my God. That reminds yeah. me of when we were in Peru and I was constipated. <laughs> <and your mom laughs> <was drunk. laughs> And your mom was trying to explain what was happening with me and she the got pharmacist. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, yeah. So she, <laughs> she kept just... holding up her hands and making a no poop motion. Yeah. And I was so humiliated. I already had to tell your mom I was constipated for five days. And she was like, oh. I just remember my mom telling the pharmacist, she's like, hey, it's getting no poop that I just that and then she tells you, you just need to take the poop, the pill and then you'll poop. I know. And I was like, I don't need the hand signals. <laughs> oh my God. I'd forgotten about that. Okay. So you so, finally went. <laughs> okay. So, so, so you're in the water. Mm-hmm. You need to shit. The guy is following you. You finally then, get them to go away. And then I had to throw them the underwater while floating and kicking your shitting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why did 
did you think Brian's story was going to top this? <laughs> I just feel weird um, talking about that to the public. <laughs> So I would like to apologize to the Fish and Wild Services of Indonesia for what I did to the natural land. <laughs> I guess you don't have to wipe after that. No, that was the best part, honestly. Built-in bidet. <laughs> the faster you kick, the cleaner you get. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, that's everything I wanted it to be. Um, <laughs> on that note, what three things are you grateful for right now? <laughs> Besides I'm... not being in that ocean. <laughs> also, just think about how badly that could have ended for that guy if he didn't get away in time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. How clear was the water? Huh? How clear was the water? Well, thank God it wasn't like Cancun clear because boy, would that have been traumatizing. The good thing is that we were like deep enough. So you took it from Cancun clear to Galveston. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, this water's so gross here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm never going to be able to go back to Indonesia now because of this. <laughs> Yeah, Indonesia is actually big time listeners. Of the past. I know they are. Okay, um, okay. let's hear your gratitude list. <laughs> okay, my gratitude list is I am, I'm really grateful to have these like few months with my parents, which I don't think I would have gotten unless COVID happened. Um, so I've been really grateful for this time. I'm also just like so grateful to have a freaking roof over my head. Um, yeah. I think COVID has really made me appreciate like all the little things that we take for granted. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also, as corny as this is, like the technology, just if it was 1918 right now, <laughs> um, like during the last pandemic, imagine like how awful it would have been to be like socially distanced without being able to see your friends. Yeah, we also wouldn't be able to vote. <laughs> and that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm super grateful for technology as well. It's, yeah. it's made being so isolated, not feel as isolating. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, what's the best advice you've ever been given? Um, I have to say the best advice I've ever been given was, is from my dad, just about like not giving up when things are tough. Um, just like showing up every day can make a difference. Um, and just kind of just like the fake it till you make it mentality, like everything's going to be okay and everything's going to get better. And, you know, when you're in a bad situation, it's not always going to be that way. So just like, just being positive and just showing up and making it through. I love that. Okay, what's one thing most people don't know about you? Um, I'd say um, for people who know me, um, I think they have this perception that I'm like very outgoing and gregarious and um, just like get along with people really easily. Um, but I don't think they realize that I'm like get cripplingly um, like shy and <laughs> I am cripplingly shy and like nervous um around other people and that I really just like work through it but I in social situations like I'm pretty like terrified until how I really get to know people how have you worked through it what's helped um, I think um I feel like growing up and just realizing like oh like people do enjoy my personality and like think I'm funny or like to hang out with me and so that I just am like I just need to get to this point with this person and then I, I feel okay yeah um, I just kind of push through it. I have a lot of social anxiety as well, which most, most people don't assume. Um, and it just comes from like, it's like a panicky feeling of, am I going to be able to keep this conversation going? And like, I don't know, it's definitely like a thing of insecurity. Um, but especially if it's one-on-one -on -one with someone I don't know, it's less so in groups because I feel like other people can carry the conversation, 
But if I'm one-on-one with someone new, I am like, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, I think that's why dating is like so awful. Yes. <laughs> Cause it's yes. like that feeling, but like magnified. Oh my God. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. There's so many dates that I'm like, yeah, let's do this. And then like an hour before I'm like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am the worst. I'm the worst failure. Well, I think, um, all us millennials are really good at that. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. One of my good friends um, in DC, he'd always say before he'd go out on a date that he would like have a like glass of wine or a shot of something and he would call them his personality drinks. <laughs> so he would be so he'd be like relaxed on the date. <laughs> so maybe let's try that stuff. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. I I tell myself now before dates that like I'm just going to meet a new friend. Yeah. And I lie to myself and say that they're actually a friend of a friend. And so it doesn't feel like we don't have anything in common. Nice. I like that strategy. Maybe we'll give it a go. All right. Your strategy is drink. Mine is lie to yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Happy dating, everyone. I just want to make it clear that we both came from very like happy homes. <laughs> so I don't know where this has come from. <laughs> it's here. Um, okay. Last question. Why am I single? Oh my God. We just have an hour, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me get my phone. I have a list. Um, <laughs> um I think, I think you're single because, um, because I think women have realized that getting married for the sake of getting married, like does nothing for us. Mm -hmm. Like we have, we're professionals. We can now pick what we want. So I think in being like pickier, we don't get married as quickly or as often. Um, and the other thing is I also think dating is just so hard for us. Um, because it's not like we're our parents, you know, I feel like our parents would like walk into a bar and would be like, hello, my lady, would you like to marry? <laughs> <laughs> like, it just seems like guys would be much more willing to walk up and ask you on a date. And now it's like, swap, swap, swap. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. That's so true. I think it's like, if I were to get married again that person would have to provide so much value to my life um, in order for that to make sense. And not even like, to your point, like, I don't care what you make. I don't care. Like, you're not fending for me. Yeah. Um, I strictly just want- You to like enhance my life. Yeah. I want like life is going to be life, right? Sometimes it's going to be awesome. Other times it's going to be really, really hard. And I want someone next to me who can help me laugh through all of those moments and who can balance the neurotic side of me that thinks everything needs to be perfect. And everyone thinks I need to be perfect and look perfect and do everything right the first time. Um, And I think that's, it's been hard for me specifically, the feedback that I got from one of my previous exes was, it's hard to be your partner because you don't need me. Well. (laughs) That's your shit, not mine. (laughs) Yeah, that's how I feel about that. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, which is totally fine, but I I get that. That sounds like a you problem, buddy. (laughs) Yeah. Talk to your therapist. What do you need to do for me to need you? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But it's, it's just interesting how that dynamic has changed. Have you read Modern Romance from- Yeah, I'm not a strong reader. (laughs) (laughs) I'm better at drawing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'll watch the movie when it comes out. Um, (laughs) No, I haven't read that. 
It's from Az Aziz Ansari wrote it, and he does like this entire research on marriage and relationships and how they started basically like that was women's way to leave their parents' house. Yeah. Was to get married. And now it's like this whole thing about being in love and a partnership and a relationship and being equals and all those kinds of things, which makes it so much harder than just like, do you want to leave your parents' house? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, well, happy dating to you, baby. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for your tips. I'm going to try them out once this pandemic is over. Yeah, just lie to yourself. <laughs> um, I love you. Love I you really too. appreciate you making the time. I, my, I feel like I got abs from this episode. Because <laughs> it just crack me up. I feel like I'm right back in D.C., and we're singing salt and Peppa and boats and hose. And I just miss ya. I miss you too. Thanks for having me on. I can't wait for us to be um, number one on Apple podcast. Oh yeah. From your lips to God's ears. Um, <laughs> do you have any friends that you would like to give a plug to who are making things, doing things? <laughs> um. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I would like to give a generic plug to um, some girlfriends in DC that um, are in a supper club and a book club that I'm in. And they are just women who are like making things happen for other women and are just a positive influence on me as well as others. Um, and just give like great energy to everybody. Oh, so, yeah. I love that. All right. Thank you for being here, Kia. Thanks for having me. Okay, hold your little horses because I ain't done with show. Okay. I have to stop. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? Did not record? Well, I'll just use this one. <laughs> <laughs>